Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen from the Clayton Candle Company. If you're new here, I make videos all about candle making, so consider subscribing to my channel so you never miss a video. Okay, so today we are on step three of the candle making process. So far, we have gone over how to choose your wax, how to choose your container, and today we are gonna talk about how to choose your wick. There are seven main types of candle wicks. And today I'm gonna to go over the basics of each of them and then at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you which wick that I chose and why. Let me just explain why this is so important. So your wick could kind of make or break you. And when I say that is, is this is the most challenging part of candle making because there's so many things that go into choosing your wick. So you wanna have proper burn time and then you don't wanna to have too much soot or any soot. And then you also don't want flickering and you don't want mushrooming. And then you also want a proper melt pool. And there's so many things that go into this and all of this stuff is a lot of trial and error and I have yet to find the absolute perfect wick. So you just have to be okay with what's acceptable and be able to move on and always be wanting to improve your candle. Full disclosure, I've used some of these wicks, but not all of them. Okay, so to get started today, our first wick that we will go over is Zinc Core Wicks. They are used in pillars, votives, and gel candles. They are recommended to be used with paraffin wax, and they come in three different sizes. Now, the size of the wick is determined on the size of your container. Now, I don't have any recommendations for this particular wick because I have I don't use paraffin wax, nor have I ever used a zinc core wick. The next type of wick is a paper core wick. Paper core wicks burn very hot and they create a very large melt pool. They are normally used in large containers and come in one size. Now, I also don't have any experience with this wick either. Next is the CD series. Now, these are favorites among seasoned candle makers. They are flat braided with a special paper filament woven around them. They are perfect for a consistent burn and they work well with paraffin, soy, or coconut wax. They come in 12 different sizes and the recommended size is based off the size of your container. Next is the Eco Series. It is specifically designed for natural waxes. It is a flat, coreless cotton wick braided with a paper thin filament for burn stability. The Eco Series is self-trimming, meaning there's minimal mushrooming. Mushrooming is when the wick folds over on itself after it's been burned. The Eco Series comes in eight different sizes and the recommended size is based off the size of your container. Next is the HTP Series. They are coreless cotton braided wicks. They are designed to leave less carbon buildup and less smoking. They can be used with paraffin candles in pillars, containers, or gel candles. The last series of the braided wicks is the LX series. They are flat braided cotton wicks chemically treated with a high melt point wax. They can be used with paraffin or soy and they're specifically designed to reduce mushrooming, soot, and smoke. They come in 13 different sizes and the recommended size is based off the size of your container. Last but certainly not least are wooden wicks. Now wooden wicks are fairly new to the candle industry and there are two different types, hardwood and softwood. Softwood is known for its unique sound when being burned with its crackle and pop. They are recommended to be used with soy wax but can be used with paraffin wax as well. To achieve that crackle sound, it is recommended that you don't use too much fragrance oil. And these are not recommended for pillar use. Now that we've discussed the types of wicks, let's talk about choosing the size of your wicks. Wicks are measured in two different ways. The first being the length. Now you want to choose a wick length that the wick will touch the bottom of the container and extend past the rim. This is because in the cooling process, you want the wick to be able to attach to something to keep the wick straight. For example, I use a popsicle stick and I drill a hole through it. So during the cooling process, the wick goes through the popsicle stick. It sits 
on the rim and then that is how it will cool. The second way a wick is measured is by the gauge and that means how thick the wick is. Now, for example, Eco 10. What that is is Eco is the series and 10 is the gauge. So that means the number of threads that are braided together. Now this is a six gauge, I don't know if you can see that, and this is an 18 gauge. So the bigger the number, the thicker the wick is. Can you see that? <laughs> you probably can't see that, sorry. I'll try that, there we go. Is it in focus now? All right, anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for example, Eco 10 or CD 10 or CD 18. The first part of the number, or the per first part is the series, meaning Eco, CD, HTP. The second part is the gauge, which means how thick it is. Get it? Make sense now? All right. <laughs> okay, moving on. Now that we've gone over the types of wicks and how they're measured, let me just explain why this is so important. So your wick could kind of make or break your candle. Um, so for example, like you're looking for a wick that is going to give you the proper burn time, no soot, no flickering, no mushrooming, you want a proper melt pool, and like all of those things, I have yet to find the perfect wick. So it could get very labor intensive, a lot of trial and error, and you could probably like kill yourself in trying to be a perfectionist. And I feel like you get so caught up in the perfectionism of it. Um, so I started off with one wick and now I've switched to another. And it's not because there was anything wrong with the first one, I just wanted to try something different and this actually ended up working out better. So just be okay with constantly trying new things, basically is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Okay, so if you're still with me, leave a comment down below so I know that I'm not by myself here because I know a lot of times I like to keep my videos very concise, but this one is so important and can make or break you, so I felt like it just needed more attention. And now I feel like I'm rambling, so just make sure you comment down below so I know I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> so I feel like I just threw a bunch of words at you and I didn't explain what any of that means. And because this is a beginner tutorial, I'm going to assume that you don't know what they mean. So let's go over them a little bit. So proper burn time. So what I mean by that is that's how long your candle should last or is going to last. For example, if the wick is too large for your candle or your container size, the flame will be really big and your candle will burn very, very hot, which means it won't last that very long. Now, on the contrary, if your wick is too small, it actually won't create the proper uh, melt pool, which means it won't go to the sides of the container, which will create this like tunnel effect, which you don't want, by the way. And the wax ends up just basically covering the wick and then it won't light. So you don't want that. Okay, so a full melt pool, since I just said that. A full melt pool is the wax that is melted around the wick. Now you want this achieved, you want this to touch all sides of the container within three hours of the candle burning. That's how you know you have the correct wick size. I also mentioned soot. So soot is that black smoke that comes off the flame and you'll probably see that with a lot of paraffin wax candles, um, but it honestly ends up leaving like black stuff on the walls, on the ceiling, above where you burned the candle it's just not really good and it does not come off clean. I can tell you that actually when you put a wet cloth on it, it ends up just spreading everywhere, all over the wall. It's horrible. It's, you need like a magic eraser or something, it's really bad. So I think flickering kind of speaks for itself. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with flickering, but some people do. And it, it, when it's excessive, I guess like it kind of could, you know, make you dizzy. Um, so it speaks for itself, but you really don't want it to flicker that much. You kind of just want a consistent burn. Mushrooming. So I know I mentioned this before in this video, but let me just go a little bit more into it. It describes excess carbon buildup on top of the wick. So basically the wick folds over onto itself and it won't burn properly. You don't want mushrooming. Okay, so I totally learned this the hard way, and I wish someone would have told me this when I first got started, but if you have a container size, right, 
that is larger than three inches diameter, you need multiple wicks. No matter how thick the gauge is, it's just, it's, you need multiple wicks. And honestly, it's, it's, it's better that way. So anything over three inches in diameter, you could do a double wick, you could do a, um, I skipped a number. Um, you do a double wick, you could do a triple wick or even a quadruple wick. Now I do in my 16 and 20 ounce candles, I do triple wicks. Um, and I just feel like it just is burn consistency is great. Um, and I get proper burn time. Now listen, deciding this can be a little confusing and overwhelming, but our good friends at Candle Science have actually broke this down and it's great. So you, I'll put the link down in the description. You go on the website, they have basically what cut size container that you're using and then they have recommended wick sizes and wick series based off of your what wax you're using, what size container you're using, and then it basically breaks that, all that down. So love them over there. They break it down very easily for us and I, that's actually what I used and that's how I realized that I wasn't using the correct wicks because in my larger candles, the burn pool, or I'm sorry, the melt pool was not going all the way to the sides of the container and it was creating that tunnel effect that I told you about. And um, come to find out, it's because I wasn't using the uh, right amount of wicks. So make sure you go over there. So now the moment that you've been waiting for, I told you that I would tell you what wicks that I used. Okay, so in the beginning, I started out with the Eco Series wicks. Um, I did, like I said, had no idea what I was doing and I just used one size wick <laughs> for basically, all of my sizes. I didn't realize you'd use different sizes for each size container and yeah, it was a big mess. So my good friends, actually my local candle supplier, Candle Wick, I went to them and I was telling them what was happening and they were the ones that actually said, well, you should be using different size wicks based off your container. So they actually gave me a bunch of samples and I brought them home and found which ones work for me. Now, when I went on to Candle Science, they said, oh yes, Eco works great, but we recommend using the CD series. So that is actually what I use. So for my larger candles diameters, meaning my 16 ounce and my 20 ounce, I use three wicks in each candle and I use CD sixes. So I use three of these in those. And then in my eight ounce candles, I use CD 18s. And then in my four ounce candles, I use CD8s and they are all six inches and I end up trimming them down. Um, but what's really nice is the fact that I can actually um, use the other half and I bought tabs, which are at the bottom, and I can actually use them for more candles. So I actually get double the candles out of these wicks, these size wicks, it's great. So thank you for like staying with me through this long part three of the series. If you have any questions about candle wicks, candles, like anything about candles, comment down below. I answer all of my comments. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media, the Clayton Candle Company, and I will be sure to see you on the next video. Hey, are you interested in making candles in your own kitchen? Here is a full tutorial right here. And if you want a video on every step of the way, check out this playlist right here. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel.